Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mickey Mantle, the greatest card in the history of MLB The Show, and I'm going to show you how to get him. Max contact, max power, max speed, and the field is just about perfect too. This is incredible. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you how to get all the good cards in this game. That includes all the collection rewards. We have Mickey Mantle, we have Jimmy Rollins, we have George Brett, we have Andrew McCutcheon, we have Randy Johnson, and of course, the newly acquired Shohei Otani. All of these cards cost a lot of stubs, and I've gotten every single one of these no money spent, and I have 1.6 million stubs after the fact. The main thing I'm going to tell you to do is just play the game, but you can always optimize how to play the game. Let's jump into that. If you look over here, we have a featured program, which is almost always rolling out some kind of content. Right now, this is one of the biggest programs of the year, finest of the franchise. We have 391 thousand xp in this program with 19 days to spare i feel like that's pretty good even though i've been very busy you unlock all kinds of stuff along the way some of these icons don't really matter but you get some packs you get some unlockable things like jerseys that you might need to lock in for collections to get some other stuff let's talk about this classic pack you have what is called henchmen in every single program when you unlock these cards the program then asks you to use them and collect parallel xp inside of the game itself as you can see, most of these are already completed, and every single one in this program has given us 3,000 extra XP into the program, aside from what you get just by playing the game. So you're kind of really optimizing that here. What I also like to do is when I have these cards, I'm grinding the parallel XP inside of the conquest maps that the game puts out for the program. Completing this one gave us 45,000 XP. We didn't even play the one that just dropped for another 45,000 XP. So keep in mind, you're getting XP playing the game. You're getting XP missions by completing parallel XP with those players inside of the henchman program. And then once you finish these maps, you get a massive boost in XP as well. I also try to make sure I do as many daily moments as possible to get some more XP as well. And then the featured program moments. I didn't do most of the pitching moments and they added some hitting uh, moments that I got to look into. But regardless, you get a bunch of those done and then you get what 25,000 XP for this pack. You get 40,000 XP for this pack. Also, at this point in the year, you're getting multiple choices per pack here. So that's also something to know. You're getting several cards. The reason I'm telling you to do that is because as soon as you get to a certain threshold, you start unlocking the bosses from the program. Now, this is a massive program where you have up to 30 bosses. And right here, you get to pick one. Um, here, you pick another one. So on and so forth. Another one. Another one. I think all the way up to 400,000 XP, you're getting tons of choices here. Now, I want you to get these as fast as possible so you can make as many stubs as possible. It's simple supply and demand. When few people have this card, it's worth more. Let's look at Adley Rutschman here. You can put a buy order on him for 35,666 subs right now and you can, if you don't want to wait, you can spend 47. But even then, if you go to the marketplace tab, he was worth as much as 86, 87,000 stubs the day it dropped. You could get this done relatively quickly, especially when you get the conquest map done. That, that's a one day job. It's not a lot. And I'll show you that in a minute. So you could have sold Adley for about 80,000 stubs and you could have picked them up at 35,000. So you could have gotten this card for free and made a good amount of stubs afterwards, at least 40,000. The AL West. There's the same price now, but his price, Jose Altuve, was as much as 105,000 stubs. Wait, why am I still over here? All right, anyway. Jose Altuve was worth about 105,000 stubs day one because people were getting that far in the program so you could have sold them for 105,000 stubs and then bought back at 36,000 if you do it today that's a very good deal and once again you're not spending stubs you're just grinding the game and you're optimizing your stubs go a little further along i think the last pack before it starts resetting to the al east again is the National League west so don't our show they're all about 42,000 stubs right yeah go to the marketplace People were spending as much as 200,000 stubs on Manny Machado the day this program dropped. So if you got that far along, which once again, I'm going to tell you, it's not that crazy. So you get XP from playing the game. You do a bunch of daily moments. I also, I usually max out my program XP before the new one starts. So I have a bunch of these, pro I have a bunch of these moments just ready to go. And then... Yeah, you got plenty of daily moments you can put into that program. Feature program moments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, Yeah, 30. Okay, so you're looking at 90,000 XP right there, okay? So about 100,000. 
You get a thousand just for playing one game. Okay, cool. <laughs> you get a classic choice pack from that. Oh, that's part of the finest thing. That's awesome. And now you're not grinding a ton of parallel XP. You only need 250 parallel XP. If you play a mini seasons game on rookie, at a place with max elevation, you can get this in one or two games, maybe three games tops. But this also applies to the pitchers. Uh, 500 XP for this, which is maybe two games, two, three inning games. So you can really stack up that XP. Now keep in mind, if you if you do some program moments and then you get some of these flashback missions while completing one of the conquest maps, you could easily eclipse 160,000 XP in a day or two when those cards are still expensive. I also like to do the exchanges. There's nothing wrong with not doing it, but I I played all year. There's so many packs. It's very easy to get the exchanges done. It's five, 10, 20, 30,000 XP in the first week. So once again, very close to getting countless amounts of these cards now i mentioned the conquest map so let's talk about that the newest map is showing you some of the awards that come out in that the first program we did was the ducks on the this was the one we completed to start off the program the one i just showed you i haven't done yet but look at the rewards for this one this is the first conquest map from this program that just dropped so one two three four five six more teams to play off against five six seven eight nine ten eleven Oh my god. Okay, so over 20 packs are playing this game without counting the hidden rewards in there. Once again, packs and XP. That's a very rewarding way to play. And the goal of Conquest, you just want to have more fans than the Stronghold. That's what you do by sitting around the map and taking over other hexagons until you have more fans and you take on the Strongholds and that's when you play actual three inning games. Another very lucrative way to make stubs is mini seasons. As you see here, I've played eight games and I've been bludgeoning my opponent and i'll show you how but first i'll show you the objectives of playing mini seasons it's like playing a bunch of games against a computer but there's now a system behind it with a reward system that really helps you get further along in this game when you make the playoffs you get a prospect choice pack you get 5,000 xp and 2,500 stops keep in mind i really only play the home games i skip some of the road games just to make sure i get into the final four to play in the playoffs mm. Then you get more stubs and XP if you make the semifinals. And if you win it all, you get a championship bundle. I believe right now the championship bundle is 15 standard packs and 5 ball and as a habit packs. Plus 15,000 stubs, 7,500 XP. Um, there's also some stuff they want you to do within the season that you can do if you'd like. If you get 40 runs with tops now or monthly award players, you get a toolbox choice pack, which you need some of those cards for collections. And most of these missions are repeatable once you start the season over, including the final reward of winning the championship and making the playoffs. Uh, Handler Choice Pack, 30 strikeouts with any postseason or finest players. That's a good idea. Look at this. Look at this. 15 extra base hits with milestone players. Another five pack of ball. More Headliner Choice Packs. Home Run Derby Choice Pack by hitting home runs on All-Star. This is very easy to do. Minor strategy postseason pitchers. All-Star game. I don't even know what the mystery pack is, but it's usually going to be something good. We already got 50 total bases. We probably did that in one game, to be honest. 20 the show packs with 3,000 stubs and 3,500 XP. You can really rack this stuff up without even trying. Now, I'll show you. If you're on next gen, this is what I'm talking to you about. If you're on a previous gen on one of the older consoles, that's perfectly fine. Just play at Court Field or Laughing Mountain Park. Those fields have max elevation. That means more offense the better it is for you. You'll get through this stuff faster. But if you are not, I want you to go to the main menu. Go to Create Stadium Creator. My friend Big E Sexton is an amazing resource when it comes to creating stadiums and MLB The Show. He actually made my own home stadium here, which is very cool. I can talk about that later. But he also has a park called Moonshot Mountain 2.0. You can't use this online. It's offline only because it doesn't uh, follow the proper guidelines in terms of outfield walls. It's literally like 300 feet for a home run to center field, like 200, 250 for left and right. I don't know the exact measurements, but it's awesome, and it's max elevation. You play on rookie, veteran, all-star, whatever you want. Pop-ups are home runs. Line drives are doubles. It's really easy to do. You gave up some runs too, but that doesn't matter. There's no objective where you got to hold your opponent to certain runs. I can put up 20 runs a game in my sleep on the stadium, so make sure you use that if you're on next gen. So we talked about Conquest, we talked about mini seasons. That's the main way I get my stubs offline. Let's talk a little bit about online. 
Ranked Seasons. If you're really competitive and you're sweaty like me, then you like playing Ranked Seasons. However, I've tapered off this year and last year. It's just not that rewarding compared to other online modes. I'll show you why. I'm ranked 763 right now in Ranked Seasons, okay? We have until the 14th to make World Series. Do I care? Not really. I'm going to give it a shot, though. But anyway, you always start at zero to begin the year. And then depending on where you end every season, they put you in a new bracket, but you don't start at zero. The goal is to climb all the way up to 900 each season, which is basically usually a month long. Now you see here, these rewards are not special. It's like a bronze card or a free silver, a free gold. And then right here, pennant race, you get these cards that are worth like 14,000 stubs. Like, that's cool. 600, 700, 800. Now you're playing on Hall of Fame and it gets really tough. You might even play some legend games here. You get the 900, you get the World Series reward, which are usually good or valuable or both. Roy Halladay, he's worth 490, almost 500,000 stubs. He was a million to start off the season. So if you can get there, good for you. That's awesome. Mario Rivera, one of the previous rewards, still expensive. Chase Utley is still expensive. Mike Piazza is still expensive. But when you think about the amount of games and innings you need to play to get here, it's a lot of time, man. It's a lot of time. The, like, and this is another complaint. Competitive players, the best players in the world, you get 20 packs, 50 packs for being a top 5, top 10 player this month. Like, eh, I don't know about that. They did create a system where you can get rewards for playing a certain amount of innings as well, but that's another issue because people quit nonstop in the game's ultimate ranked competitive mode, which does stink. We played, I assume this is 25 and 50 innings. Which is cool. You played a couple of games, you get some... Oh, sorry. Can I not read it? Tell me how many innings I play. I gotta get back over here. We played 72 innings, so that's probably for 25 and 50 innings. At 75, we get three headliners. 100, we get five standard packs. And then you get your own separate rewards. You can technically get a second World Series pack if you play up to 250 innings, so on and so forth. There's more rewards. But who wants to play 600 innings to get 50 packs? I'll show you why I'd rather not do that. Let's go to events, especially this event. We'll show you how. One event one gets you a standard pack. Five wins in this event gets you 1500 XP and a rewind events pack. They've been putting out decent rewards all year in the events. When you check out the previous ones, look at this right here. 63,000 subs, Charlie Blackman at the least. So you get two of these cards, all these cards. So if you also started late, playing events will get you cards that you weren't able to unlock previously for free while going towards the current rewards, like Jose Abreu, Felix Bautista, Michael Harris, Jacob DeGrom. Now, how much are those cards again in the World Series program? They're between 400 and 500,000 stubs. So 20 wins here, which is, if you're starting from zero, you need about 40 wins to make World Series. Felix Bautista is going for almost 185,000 stubs. Michael Harris is going for 200,000 stubs. Jacob DeGrom is going for about 800,000 stubs if you find the median in there. That's only 30 events. So not only do you get those cards, but you get, look what's along the way, two, four. Within 30 wins, you get four previous event rewards plus these cards. Then you get choice packs that you also need for these collections. Ball is, three ball is a hat packs in there. Wow, okay, a set 50 headliner for Barry Larkin. You can also get a good diamond out of that. This is a little more lucrative and it's a lot less sweaty. I also should show you inside of this 500, 1500, 2000, 2000. In addition to the XP for playing the game and knocking out missions, you're getting XP for win thresholds. So this is also pushing you further along in the program. Battle Royale, we can talk about that for a bit. If you're really good at the game, you go 12 and 0 real quick, then you can get the flawless rewards, which are here. Like, a million stubs. I'm not going to lie. That's awesome. That's beautiful. That's cool. Even the old rewards from last month are still pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. However, getting all those wins can be tough, which is why they add the bronze, silver, and gold missions. When you're doing the draft, you get guaranteed rounds to pick these cards. However, it's a little sweaty. I don't, I don't like sweating too much in VR. I'd rather have a little more fun grinding offline and playing events, just chilling. You do get rewards for parallel XP, if you win a certain amount of games, if you get total bases and runs, which will accelerate this. Especially for this month, I guess Trout um, is worth going for. I just spent the stubs because I had it. But I find events to be the most rewarding system this year, online. 
I'm telling you, there's an embarrassing amount of packs that are being given out in this game, like candy, where you're playing online or offline. And when it accumulates like this, I've opened like a hundred packs this week, and I still have this many packs left. Like a lot, a lot, a lot. So just grind, man. The packs will come. Obviously, you got to put the stubs into something, so here we are. We got all these done. Let's see, where's my collection rewards? So we had uh, Brett, Kutch, Rollins, and Mantle, no money spent. They also had Otani in here. I'm oh, sorry, he was... Yes, yeah, Otani was part of the uh, Takashi collection. And like I said, I didn't spend a single bit of money. It's really simple to do. Here's another method. You don't have to play the game online or offline. You can actually do this on your phone. Once again, just pay attention. Try to hear me out. Flipping is kind of tough if you don't know what you're doing. Once you do know what you're doing, especially now, it's very easy to make stuffs. Let's go to the community marketplace. Here's Adrian Gonzalez. If I want to buy him right now, I can hit this button and spend 15,499 stubs. Or, if I wanted to sell him right now and I had him in my collection, I can sell him for 10,001 stubs. I don't want to do either of those. You know why? Because it's not worth it. First off, when you sell a card, you are supposed to uh, give 10% in tax to the game. They use that to combat uh, stub sales and stuff like that, third party illegal stub transfers, yada, yada, yada. If I sell, him at this price of 10,000, I actually get 9,000 left, which is less than his actual quick sale value of 10,000 stubs, which is why you can't even purchase him for less than that. Let's put in a buy order for Adrian Gonzalez. Always go one stub over the sell now price. Boom, I'm in the lead. Let's also put in a sell now because uh, uh, let's put in the sell order because I have one of these. If you look here, I'm going to make about 3,946 stubs if and when that order goes through. When you put in the buy order, you go one step over the sell now. When you put in the sell order, you go one step under the buy now. That's how it works, and that's how it shows up. Some of these are a little riskier than others. If you look at Joey Votto here, one step under. See, 4,000 stubs, that's that's a big that's a big margin. Somebody went from 78 to 82 to 85 to 87 to 99. So that's a little bit... It's a, I don't trust that. So don't do that. Todd help. This looks like a safe bet. 10, 0, 7, 0, 9. Boom. And let's go back to Adrian Gonzalez because he sold. 15, 4, 9, 8. Let's do this again. Buy another one. Or Kluber. See, it looks like you go, wow, 516 to 568. That's a big drop. You got to remember the 10% tax. You're actually losing 5,000 subs if you flip that card. So don't do that. Vinny Castilla. Now that's a decent flip. Put in the buy order. We'll put in the sell order on the one I have. This is how I usually get collections done, especially if I see a card I don't have and I have the stubs to buy it. I flip it until I make a profit on it. You know what I mean? Oh, another Adrian Gonzalez went through. I need one to sell, though. For a sale, you look like, oh, wow, there's almost a 20,000 stub gap here. But then you look at the... Mm, you can make 10 off that. You can make 10 off that, however. Look how it goes from 88 to 93 to 95 to 100,000. It drops 59 to 67. Might be a little volatile. People might be sweaty looking for that bid and try to undercut you by a lot. I go by one stuff. Here's a safer bet. You got Eric Davis here. If you were to go 22, 197, you're making 6,000 stubs off there. That's not as bad. Maybe that's worth looking into. I like doing basically quick sell flips, though. Like I said, I think it's 93 overall and above. The card cannot be sold or bought for less than 10,000 stubs. So look at Corbin Carroll here. 10, 1, 0, 6. Because if I acquire him and I flip him, I'm making 5,000 stubs. So on and so forth. Just look through, filter through whatever you want, but... There's plenty of flips. You just got to look for it. That's how you flip. I don't want to, you know, I don't need to walk you through it anymore, right? Like, you know how to do it. Robin Yao. Okay, let's... 11, 7, 5, 2. God forbid he drops a 10,000. You're only losing a couple of stubs, but... 
That's a nice flip right there. Another 6,000 stubs. Easy money. Flip to your own heart's desire. One thing you can do, though, go on your MLB The Show companion app. Because not only is it faster, let's say I wanted to buy this card. All this effort. Just to put in one bid. Once you type in bid on your phone app, you can actually just spam the order. You can put in 200 orders if you want. There's no limit. So, Oh, look at that. Vinny Castilla just sold. So we bought him for 10,000. We sold him for that much. So we made about 6,000 stubs right there in our sleep, man. We weren't even doing anything. Especially at this point in the year, a lot of people comment on my TikToks or on Twitter or in Twitch. And they're like, I don't have any of these collection cards. What do I got to do? Please watch this video and especially pay attention to the flipping part. You can do it on your phone. You can do it so passively now. I promise you, you can get this stuff done. I'm not trying to like gas you up and gaslight you about it. You can really get it done. I have every single card in the game that I want. Look at my team. I got no reason to lie to you. I do got to go to work though. I got to head out. Please like the video and sub to the channel if you enjoyed. I really want everyone to get the most out of the content in this game. The gameplay, we can have another conversation about, but the content is top notch. So thank you, SDS. Thank you, MLB The Show, for this. This is fantastic. Until next time, peace out. Song is copyrighted, but thanks for watching. Da -da 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 -da.